من المؤمنين رجال صدقوا ما عهد الله عليه. From the believers there are men who are true to their covenant. That means they fulfill the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, those are the companions whom Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, he said, Ula'ika ashabun Muhammad. Those are the companions of Muhammad. Kanu wallahi afdala hadihi al-umma. By Allah, they were the best of this ummah in terms of quluban, their hearts, wa a'maquha ilman, knowledge. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he had chosen to be the companions of his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to establish the religion of Islam. So you should know their excellence and there should be gratitude to their efforts and also you should follow their steps and to hold on to whatever you can from their manners and from their methodology for verily this, this, the religion of theirs is to be the straight path. Mu'ad ibn Jabal is our companion for tonight insha'Allah. Mu'ad ibn Jabal is uh, Kunya is Abu Abdul Rahman. He is Mu'ad ibn Jabal ibn Amr ibn Aws al-Ansari al Khazraji. He is from the Ansar. And he's from the tribe of Al-Khazraj. You know that the Ansar are Aws and Khazraj. Aws are more than the Khazraj. The Khazraj are less in terms of number than the Aws. So he is from the Khazraj. Mu'adh, radiallahu an, Ibn Jabal, he is Abu Abdul Rahman, his kunya. He had witnessed all the scenes, all the incidents, all the events with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Even he was there present at the second pledge of Al Aqaba, which is in terms of importance, it is not to say if it's at least equal to the importance of Ghazwat Badr, but actually even more than that. So, Bay'at Al Aqaba Thaniya is equivalent to Badr and also equivalent to Al Ridwan, Bay'at Al Ridwan, the pledge of the Ridwan. He was there in Badr, he was there in Banu Qaynuqa, he was there in Banu Al Nadir's tribe, he was there in the Battle of. Uhud, he was there in the battle of al muraisi Al-Khandaq, the trench. He was there in the battle of Qurayla, and he was there in the battle of Khaybar, and Mukta, and Mecca, and also the repossession of Mecca, and also Hunayn after that, and Tabuk. So all the events he was participating, and he died in the plague of Umwas, which was in Bilad al-Sham, in the reign of the Khilafah of Umar ibn al-Khattab in the year 15 after Hijrah. From his uh, excellence and his virtues, first of all, talking about the love of the Prophet Sallallahu to him. He was very eager to be counseled by the Messenger of Allah. And the Prophet of Allah, he was also keen to counsel Mu'ad ibn Jabal. Mu'ad ibn Jabal, he said, one day the Prophet Sallallahu took hold of my hand. He said, Ya Mu'ad, O Mu'ad, Wallahi inni la By Allah, I love you. I could to be Abi anta wa ummi. Said I said, I sacrificed my mother and my father for your sake, Messenger of Allah. Also, Wallahi inni la By Allah, I also love you. Qala Mu'ad. He said, O oh, Mu'ad, inni usik. Verily, I counsel you. La tada'anna duwa kulli salah. Allahumma a'inni ala dhikrika wa husni ibadatik. Don't leave whatsoever to say after finishing the prayer, O oh Lord, help me to dhikrik wa husni ibadik. Allahumma anni ala dhikrik wa husni ibadatik, O Lord. That is, help me to remember you and also to be good in your worship. Uh, so, to be as well perfecting my worship towards you. In this incident, on this hadith, we learn the following. That it is permissible for the person to say by Allah even though he was not asked to make an oath. This is for a reassurance and more convincing. So you say by Allah this and this and this, no problem because the oath in Allah is a ibadah, a worship. Also we learn from this hadith that if you love a person in the sake of Allah, you should tell him. For the Prophet of Allah, he loves Mu'adh and he told him, that he, by Allah, I love you O Mu'adh. And the Prophet ﷺ, he said, if a person loves his brother, then let him tell him that he loves him. Also, the authority of Anas عنه, that, a, uh, that uh, he was with the Prophet وسلم, and a man passed by and he said, Messenger of Allah, verily, I love this man. So he said, did you tell him? He said, no, Messenger of Allah. He said, then go ahead and tell him. So. He followed him and he said to him, I love you in the sake of Allah. The man replied, I also love you in the sake of Allah whom you have loved me for his sake. 
Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu anhu arda. He, as I said, the Prophet of Allah was keen to counsel him all the time. He said, one day I wanted to have a journey. So I said to the Prophet of Allah, counsel me. So he said, the Prophet of Allah told him, Urbudillah, that is, worship Allah. Wala tushrik bihi shay'a, and associate nothing in his worship. Wa'amal lillahi ka'annaka tara, and do for Allah, that is, just like you are seeing him. Wa'adud nafsaka fil mawta, and consider yourself among the dead. And wadkuri laha inda kulli hajarin wa shajar, and mention, remember Allah next to every stone and every tree. And ida amilta sayyi'ah, if you have done a uh, an, a sin or an evil deed, fa'mal hasana, then do a good act, a good deed, a good hasana, a sirru bil sirr wal alaniya tu bil alaniya. That is the hidden against the hidden and the one which is open against the open. So if you've done a sin which is hiddenly, you do as well a hidden good act. If you've done a sin which is openly, you do a good act openly. Mu'ad ibn Jabal, he said, Messenger of Allah, counsel me. He was keen to learn from the Prophet of Allah. And the Prophet of Allah, as I said, keen to teach him. He said, اتَّقِ اللَّهَ حَيْثُ مَا كُنْتُ Fear Allah wherever you are. So he said to him, Messenger of Allah, more. So he said, أَتْبِعِ السَّيِّئَةَ الْحَسَنَةَ تَنْحُوهَا Follow the evil or the sin by a righteous good deed, it will wipe it off. He said, Messenger of Allah, more. He said, خَالِقِ النَّاسَ بِخُلُقٍ حَسَنٍ He said, mix up with the people and have the good manners with the people. And also he said, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also told me number of acts, a number of things that I should do. One of them, this great journey that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was, he was with him. Before we go to that journey, he said, he said, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, shall I inform you, O Mu'ad, about a gate from the gates of paradise? He said, yes, Messenger of Allah. He said, لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله. That's the gate. لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله. When he was sent to Yemen by the Prophet of Allah, the Prophet Sallallahu he started to counsel him. And he was riding while the Prophet of Allah walking. Look at the humbleness of the Prophet of Allah. That Mu'ad ibn Jabal was mounting while the Prophet of Allah is walking. And he said, O Mu'ad, Ya Mu'ad, إِنَّكَ عَسَى أَلَّا تَلْقَانِ Maybe if you come back, you will not find me. That is after this year. And لَعَلَّكَ أَنْ تَمُرَّ بِمَسْجِدِ هَذَا وَقَبْرِهِ And you may pass by this masjid of mine and also by my grave. Mu'ad, he started to cry, رضي الله عنه, because he can't, you know, bear, you know, leaving the Prophet وسلم, and thinking about the Messenger of Allah would pass away. Um, so he said that he looked at the Medina of the Prophet وسلم, he said, إِنَّ أَوْلَى النَّاسِ بِهِ الْمُتَّقُونَ Those are the one who are close to me, are the ones who are pious, muttaqun, wherever they are and wherever they come from. مَنْ كَانُوا وَحَيْثُ كَانُوا So here the Prophet وسلم, is counseling Mu'ad ibn Jabal رضي الله عنه وارضاه. From the issues of the virtues of Mu'ad ibn Jabal, beside that he was uh, that is the Prophet of Allah's love to him and he was keen to counsel him. The Prophet of Allah was keen to tell him to counsel him as well or to teach him. That is, he was as well keen to enter paradise and to pass the test and avoid the hellfire as much as he can. So he said, this is the journey was uh, a promise I'm going to talk about. He said, I was in a journey with uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and somehow my camel got close to his camel. I got closer to him. And when I got closer to him, I asked him, Messenger of Allah, دُلَّنِي عَلَىٰ عَمَلٍ يُدْخِلُنِ الْجَنَّةِ وَيُبَاعِدُنِ عَنِ النَّارِ Inform me of an act that will get me closer to paradise and keep me away from the hellfire. If you think about it now, Mu'ad ibn Jabal, he is on a journey amongst a lot of companions. And this journey is an opportunity for him. He's next to not just the Prophet of Allah, he's the head of the state. So as he was there, Straight away, he grabbed that opportunity. He did not say, Messenger of Allah, make sure that when you repossess Mecca to make me the mayor of Mecca or to make me one of the members of parliament. He never said that. Make sure that, you know, if you give money that I will give such and such portion. He didn't say that. He was keen about to learn how to save himself from the fire and how to get paradise. That was he keen on. As he, was, he was concerned about. And then he asked this question. Messenger of Allah, inform me of an act that would get me closer to paradise and, that is, keep me away from the hellfire. Do you think Mu'ad ibn Jabal, who is a scholar, doesn't know the answer of such a question? SubhanAllah. He's asking a question which is obvious. He's been with the Prophet of Allah and he knows that the, you know, 
most important thing is to abide by the Islam and the pillars of Islam and the pillars of Iman. But he wants to learn more. And the Prophet of Allah never as well rebuked him and he said, why did you ask me a very obvious question? You shouldn't have asked me what happened to the Muslims, poor <coughs> Muslims being under persecution from the people of Quraysh in Mecca. You should ask me about those. Why are you asking him about such a question, you know, to know how to get to paradise and save yourself from hell? Didn't you know that, Mu'ad? He never told him off like that. Well, you should have asked me about the people being tortured. You know, like these people, you ask them, tell them about something. Brother, Syrian people have been tortured, you know. So the people were tortured in Mecca. Why are you asking me about that? Why do you ask me about, you know, the rice and the rise in prices and, you know, tomatoes and cucumber? And you should really make a, an uprise for that. You really... He never said that to him. He actually sort of, uh, 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 he had greeted his question with saying that, لَقَدْ سَأَلْتَ عَنْ عَظِيمٌ You have asked about something which is very great. وَإِنَّهُ لَيَسِيرٌ عَلَى مَنْ يَسَّرَهُ اللَّهُ لَهُ But it is easy upon whom Allah made it easy for him. Then he told him, that is, what is the act to make him to enter paradise and to save himself from that? قَالْ أَنْ تَعْبُدَ اللَّهُ لَا تُشْرِكَ بِي شَيْئًا to worship Allah, associating none in his worship. This is shahabat, la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. So when you say that, I worship nothing except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. There's no God worthy of worship except for Allah alone. Wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh. I keep away from all the bid'ah. That's a shakil shahad. I have nothing to do with the bid'ah. I'm following the Prophet of Allah. And ta'bud Allah, ta'bud Allah, la tushrika biha shay'a. La tushrika biha shay'a. And the second one, قَالْ أَنْ تُقِيمُ الصَّلَةِ And to establish the prayer. The second pillar of Islam. Third one, أَنْ تُؤْتِ الزَّكَاةِ That is, and to give the zakah. Fourth, وَأَنْ تَصُومَ رَمَضَانِ And to fast Ramadan. And the fifth, وَأَنْ تَحُجَّ الْبَيْتِ And to make hajj to the house of Allah. Those are the five pillars of Islam, and I'm pretty sure Mu'ad ibn general, he knows that. He's a scholar, he's another five pillars of Islam. What Mu'ad ibn Jabal, he's not just after that, because he knows that when he asks the Prophet ﷺ something, he gets not just an answer for his question, for other things, the benefit of it. Also to re-emphasize and reassure him that those are the five pillars which are important. And the Prophet of Allah, when you ask him something, you always get something beside it or more extra. When the Prophet of Allah asked, was asked regarding the wudu from the water of the sea, the Prophet of Allah he didn't say, yeah, you could make wudu from the sea, but he said, <coughs> the wudu from the sea water is totally pure and whatever in it is halal. The dead animals that you find in it is halal. But he wasn't asked for that. It's like when you, you know, get one, uh, buy one, get two free. Huh? Ask a question, you get more than one answer. So the Prophet وسلم, he said to him, Ala adulluka ala abwabil khayr. Ala adulluka ala abwabil khayr. So he's waiting for that. He didn't ask about the gates of power. He said, Shall I inform you? Shall I inform you about the gates of good? He didn't ask about that. But that was triggered from his first question. Dullani ala amal. Oh, Messenger of Allah, inform me of an act. Guide me to an act. Or make me to enter upon Allah, save me from the hellfire. He ended up with another answer for another question which he did not ask. Shall I inform you of the gate of the goods? Yes, Messenger of Allah. He said, as Jannah. That is, fasting is to be a shield. قال, kama and the charity Extinguishes the sin just like the water extinguishes the fire. And the man's prayer during the late night, then he recited that يعملون. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says. That is, he decided that their sides forsake their beds. They mean they go away from the bed. Why? They mean they don't sleep. Why? Praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In fear of him and hope as well for his paradise, for his garden, for his reward. Uh, uh, not a single person would know what has been hidden from them, from the reward. Qurati a'in is settling your eyes, you will be satisfying. The recompense for what they used to do. So here, this hadith is a great hadith. Then the Prophet of Allah he said, Shall I inform you of that is the head of the matter and 
the pillar of the matter and also the hump of the matter. Virwatu salam. He didn't ask about that. He said, Yes, my senior Lord. He said, Rasul Amr, Al Islam, Tawheed, Monotheism. And the pillar of it is as salah. And the ultimate, the highest point in its hump is the al jihad, fighting the sake of Allah. So let's just say, like the, the Islam is like a camel. The head of the camel is monotheism. If you take the head, there will be no camel. If you take the tawheed, there will be no Islam. Then the legs of the camel is the pillar. There's no legs, the camel will not be able to move. And the hump, which is the highest point, after you fulfilling your ibadah, in terms of salah, in terms of zakah, in terms of hajj, in terms of siyam, all of that, then you come to the highest point of Islam, which is the jihad. No one would speak jihad unless he had perfected and made you know, his effort in the other ibadah. So the person who's making qiyam, he would be able to make jihad, but a person who's all the time on PlayStation, I think he's going to be willing to go and sacrifice himself for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right, so this is now the last thing he said, Messenger of Allah, he said to him, Shall I inform you what hold all of that, what I mentioned together? Yes, Messenger of Allah. So he stretched his tongue, the Prophet to Allah, he said, Hold that, keep that in check. Messenger of Allah, are we going to be held accountable for what we say? He said, Thakilatka ummuka ya mu'ad. May your mother lose your mu'ad. What are you talking about? Verily the people in the, in the day of resurrection, they will be thrown on their faces and their noses in the hellfire as a result of the harvest of their tongue. What their tongue had harvested, then they will be thrown to the fire because of that. So you're going to be held responsible in charge of what you say. Watch out. Keep that in check. What comes out of your mouth, if it came out, it will not return back. So whatever comes out, you can't bring it back. It's gone. So it's either for you or against you. Remember that. Man samata najah. The Prophet said he'll be quiet. That means he'll what? He'll be having salvation. As soon as you say something, either for you or against you. It does not mean samata najah. That means, brother, what's your name? <laughs> it doesn't mean that. It means he does not indulge into everything. He's keeping quiet all the time. <laughs> just keep yourself to his business. That's all. Right. Also, we find that Mu'ad ibn Jabal, he has the greatest of all knowledge in the book and the sunnah, and he was the most knowledgeable in the halal and the haram. Who said so? Prophet Arhamu ummati bi ummati. The most merciful of my ummah regarding my ummah, Abu Bakr. Wa ashadduhum fillah. And the one who is the one who is the strongest regarding the inviolables of Allah, he would not tolerate, uh, would not tolerate any missing about with the religion, Umar radiallahu anhu. And before I pass on to the other one, it reminded me, Umar al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, uh, when a woman, she saw the Prophet sallam coming from a battle, and he's safe and sound. She said, Messenger of Allah, I made a vow, another, that if Allah brings you safe and sound from this battle, <coughs> to strike the tambourine, the duf, as a, a rejoice, a happiness. And tambourine is haram except in the occasion of Eid or the wedding, nothing else. Because always remember, ma'az, music, and instrument of music is haram. The tambourine is halal in two occasions, as I said, the Eid and the wedding. <coughs> but this is a different occasion. This is the Prophet Sallallahu coming from what? A battle safe and sound. So he said to her, go and fulfill that vow. So this is only for the Prophet of Allah. Shusi started to strike the tambourine being, you know, as a sign of being happy and profitable like came and said. Abu Bakr comes, she's still. Uthman comes, she's still. Ali radiallahu an comes, she's still. Umar comes, shh, takes the tambourine, puts it underneath her, and she sat on it. Straight away. It's like nothing had happened. And the Prophet is really laughing, smiling. Said Master, Umar ibn Khattab, Wallahi, if you go this way, the shaitan will go another way. So he called it, this is a, an act of shaitan, which is a tambourine, brings the shayateen, isn't it? It's music. So he said, if the shaitan go this way, if you go this way, shaitan will go the other way. He doesn't like it. And that's why he said, Ashadduhum fillah. The one most strict regarding the religion of Allah is Umar al-Khattab. Qal wa asdaquhum hayaa. 
and the most truthful amongst them regarding his modesty, so modest, so shy. Who is that? Uthman radiallahu anhu. Uthman radiallahu anhu. Asdaquhum haya'a, that is, Uthman radiallahu anhu. Aqrabuhum li kitabillah. And the most one, most knowledgeable in the Quran, in the recitation, Ubayy ibn Ka'ab radiallahu anhu. Qal, wa afradhum, the most knowledgeable regarding the fara'id, regarding the inheritance law, is Zayd ibn Thabit. Wa a'lamuhum bil halali wal haram. And the most knowledgeable regarding haram, halal, is Mu'ad ibn Jabal. And he said finally, wa li kulli ummatin ameen. And every ummah has a trustworthy. Wa aminu wa alihi al ummah, Abu Ubaidah, Amir ibn al-Jarrah. And the ameen, the trustworthy, this ummah is Amir ibn al-Jarrah. Abu, uh, sorry, Abu Ubaidah ibn al-Jarrah. Abu Ubaidah, Amir ibn al-Jarrah, radiyallahu anhu wa arda. The Prophet also he said, Istaqri'u al-Qur'an min arba. Yes, we said the most reciting or the most, or the best one, or the most knowledgeable recitation is Ubayy ibn Ka'b in that hadith. But in this hadith, the Prophet said, take the Qur'an from four. He said, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, Salim, Mawla Hudayfa, and Ubayy ibn Ka'b, and Mu'ad ibn Jabal. Those are the four. Allah ibn Umar, he said, we don't know. Did he start with Mu'ad or did he start with Ubayy? Which one is first? So Mu'ad ibn Jabal is a great reciter of the Qur'an. Just like Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, just like as Abu ibn Ka'b and Salim Mawla Hudayfa is a slave for Banu Hudayfa. All of those are great reciters of the Quran. Listen to Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. We have talked about Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, if you remember. Hmm? Yes. Listen to Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. He said, Kana Mu'ad ummatan qanita. Mu'ad, he was a nation. Qanita, and he's obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And man, he said, We believe that this. Is for Ibrahim alayhi salam. There's nobody else. He said, verily, we used to make a similarity between him and Ibrahim alayhi salam. Between Mu'ad ibn Jabal and between Ibrahim alayhi salam. That's how great scholar he was. Once we said, we used to compare between him and the Prophet Ibrahim. He is the closest to Ibrahim alayhi salam. On the day of resurrection, he will come and heading the scholars. Scholar, heading the scholars, and he was above them with a rank because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Allah will elevate those people who are believers amongst you and those who are knowledgeable. He will raise them ranks and paralyze. Prophet وسلم, he sent him to Yemen in order to teach them the religion. And when the Prophet of Allah chooses someone to go and teach someone, he would choose the most knowledgeable. The one whom he thinks that he would pass the knowledge in the correct way. So he sent them to Yemen to call them to Islam and teach them the religion. And when he sent them, he said, O oh, Mu'ad, you're going to come to people who are the people of the book. <coughs> Christians were, are, they were in Yemen. So Yemen was full of Christians. The Prophet of Allah sending a person, it was not any person, it was a knowledgeable person because he, had, he should know. He said, you are coming to the people of the book. Let the first thing to call them for is La ilaha illallah. To testify there is no God worthy of worship except for Allah alone. And that Muhammad is a slave and his messenger. If they obey you, then tell them that Allah Azza wa Jal made an incumbent upon you, upon them to pray five daily prayers. If they obey you, then tell them that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala imposed <coughs> upon them the sadaqah, that is the charity, which will be taken from the rich to be given to their poor. If they obey you, then tell, be careful to take the best of their monies. And be careful from the supplication or the prayer of the one who is oppressed. Uh, for verily, there is no barrier between his supplication and the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, Abu Musa al-Ash'ari also is being sent to the Yemen. And the Prophet sallam, he said to Abu Musa and Mu'ad together, Yassira wa la tu'assira, make it easy. Uh, to the people, don't make it difficult. And give glad tidings. Don't all the time make the people you know, go away from the from what you are calling them for. And uh, start to uh, 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 minimize the difference amongst you and don't differ with one another. From these two hadiths, the hadith of Musa and the hadith of Mu'ad, hadith of Allah ibn Abbas regarding Mu'ad and regarding Abu Musa al-Ash'ari, we find that the following can be gained 
and can be reaped, and there are golden principles, I call them. If you look at that, you can see number one, that the person should be a knowledgeable <coughs> person if he's going to be a da'ya to Allah. And he should be a knowledgeable person regarding the book and the sunnah and the manhaj of the salaf. May Allah be pleased with them. So he would call to Allah, he would not call to a party or a partisan or a group of people. So he sent Mu'ad and he sent Abu Musa al-Ash'ari, Abdullah ibn Qais. And uh, Allah's Messenger also told us regarding the verse, قُلْ هَذِهِ سَبِيلِي أَدْعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ عَلَى بَصِيرًا That is, say to them, O Muhammad, that this is my way to call on knowledge, على بصيرة, أنا ومن اتبعني, me and those who follow me. So, the person who has no knowledge is not allowed to convey the Islam and to make da'wah. You are a person who is ignorant, sit down and learn. Don't just go with a group of people who are a group of ignorant, led by an ignorant, and then start talking to the people, and even they dare themselves to stand on a platform or sit on a chair and start teaching the people, and they have no knowledge. It's not allowed. And unfortunately, we do have a, a group of people these days whom they are calling themselves the people of da'wah, but actually they have no knowledge of the da'wah. And we say, فَاقِدُ الشَّيْءِ لَا يُحْطِيَ A person who's got, he hasn't got the thing, he can't give it. How, how can you give you the knowledge of the da'wah when you haven't got the knowledge of the da'wah? Because you're going to be making chaos. And you remember what happened to that man who had killed 99 people, okay? Um, and he wanted to repent to Allah. So he came... And he came to a person who is a monk, and he is a, just a mere worshipper, and he's not knowledgeable. So he said to him, I killed 99 people, and I want to repent. Is there any repentance for me? He said, you killed 99, you want to repent? No repentance. So that man was enraged, and he killed him. And maybe he deserved to be killed, because he had given a fatwa, which was ignorance, that resulted in his death. So he wanted to repent. So he went to a person who was knowledgeable, a scholar. So he said to him, I killed a hundred. Can I repent to Allah? He said, yes, what is holding you from repenting? But you are in a land, this is the fact of knowledge, you are in a land where the people are no good. Travel to such and such <laughs> land where the people are good. And you know the rest of the story. <coughs> also, a group of companions, they went for a journey. And one of them, he was in a sexual defilement, Janaba. But he had a wound, an injury in his head. If he uses the water, then he might, you know, uh, be affected and he might be as well uh, in danger and that water was cold as well so he came to his friends whom they are <coughs> ignorant so he said to them you know I've got a wound in my head and I've got Janaba and I need to make ghusl I think I'll, is it possible for me to use dry ablution which is the sand just to strike the land and that's it they said no 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 there is water there you have to use it and this is fatwa based upon what ignorance so he went and he used the water he bathed himself, or he showered himself with the water, and he died. When the Prophet knew about that, he said, They have killed him, may Allah kill them. Look at that. They have killed him, may Allah kill them. For verily, the cure of the disease, he called the ignorance of the disease, the cure of ignorance is to ask. It was enough for him just to strike the land, Bismillah, and then to whack his face and then his hand, and that's it. And those people told him, What? Well, go and have a shower to wash himself with this cold water, and he had, as I said, a wound in his head. So, the ignorance is always results in disaster. And it is dangerous. And wallahi, it is dangerous. And as I say, when the knowledge disappears, that means you, wait, you are waiting for destruction. 